So I, actually, uh, I'm very proud and happy to be here and, and to have this opportunity to tell you about what we do at Candela. So we are also a French company based in Paris region. And in uh, Candela, we developed photonic quantum computers. And what I will tell you today is our photons, single photons and untangled photons, can be a very promising platform to develop hybrid and fault-tolerant quantum computers for the roadmap. So today I will focus a lot about what is inside the machines, what we can do now, and I will end my presentation. Uh, oh yeah, it works. I will end my presentation by I'll tell you a little, bit, a little bit more about the strategy that we have to build scalable fault tolerant quantum computers based on the approach that I will describe to you. Maybe first, let me tell you a little bit more about the company. Company, as I said, is a European startup based in, most of the team is based in a Paris region. Now inside the company, we have about 80 people dedicated to the development of the fabrications of quantum computers. But I'm very proud to say that now we have a multidisciplinary team with people dedicated for the fabrications of uh, semiconductors, uh, photonic integrated circuits, photonic components, but also algorithms, researchers in quantum information theory. So we have very impressive papers about quantum information theory coming from the, the company. And as well, uh, computer scientists, because we need to fabricate to develop efficient software to control the hardware. Um, now we have four main sites in Paris around Paris regions. Two are dedicated for the research. And I'm very proud to say that since a few months, we have two other sites dedicated for the production of our devices. So now we have decided to leave the academic green room where the, where the technology has been developed in the University of Paris-Saclay. And we have our own industrial clean room, which is entirely dedicated to Candela, where we can actually fabricate now thousands and thousands of um, sources that I will show you. And then recently we integrated our factory when we assemble all the machines. I will close, I will end my, my presentation by showing you a, a, a movie of a, a, how we assemble a, a quantum computer there. Let's talk about the roots of Candela, roots of the approach of the vision. It started with this device. This is an electronic microscope image of the brightest single photon sources in the world. They are fabricated with different components that I will take a few seconds to explain you now. We have a cavity with top mirrors and a bottom mirror that you can see here with these um, uh, lines, horizontal lines. And this, with this cavity, we can confine line, uh, light within few microns, few, few micrometers. And inside at the center, we can deterministically place one artificial atom, which is actually a semiconductor quantum dot. And because of the coupling between the confined light and the quantum dot, you can have an enhanced and increased interaction between the output light that you can then collect or inject and the quantum state of the quantum dot. So with this, we have a unique device where we can control actually easily the quantum state the, of the semiconductor, semiconductor quantum dot. First application of this, of course, you can imagine it's single photon source generation. You send a pulse, a pulse of energy with a laser, and you get, as it's showing here, you get a fog state, a single photon, also, uh, which is shown by the fog state one. These devices now are really compatible with uh, massive production. So we are decided to have our own clean room, three, five semiconductor clean rooms with MBE device, MBE machines. Um, uh, etching, lithography, everything is mastered by Candela's team. For years, we have been working a lot in deploying this technology into the best and the state-of-the-art academic labs. We have been selling and installing these devices in about a dozen of labs in different continents, in Australia, in Austria, in Europe, uh, not yet in North America, but I hope we will have a chance to, to do it as, uh, soon. And with this device, we have demonstrated that we can provide now uh, with semiconductor quantum dots an advantage to our customers because we have been multiplying the flow of single photons by about 50. There is a 50 order of magnitude between the previous technology, which is basically 
spontaneous down conversion sources with nonlinear crystals with here uh, quantum emitter based single photon sources. We have been working a lot on the integration of the devices, so we, now we can pigtail the semiconductor with a single mode fiber. Everything has to be cooled down at low temperature, cryogenic temperature. Everything is workable. Low uh, 4 Kelvin, so it can be operated uh, with, without any problem. And even is the same cryostat, as you can see here, we can have actually the same, the detectors and the sources in a very compact vacuum chambers that you can see on the uh, top left of the, of the images that are just shown. Just to explain that now we have a technology which allows users, researchers, people to do a lot of new science, and I've, I, we have about 30 scientific new articles that have been published since uh, this technology has been released. That was for the single photon sources. Now I would like to talk about the Candela vision of how to build a quantum computer. And this vision is basically based on four main pillars. Semiconductors, photons, artificial atoms with spins, and photonics. By playing with these four pillars, actually, we can have a scalability and manufacturability. I explained to you that now we have the chance to fabricate semiconductors uh, devices with a high reliability and a high um, efficiency. So this is now completely mastered by Candela. Then by uh, taking advantage of the photons and the large interactions between the photons and solid state qubits that are actually the, the spins inside the quantum dots, I will explain later, we can then scale up this full system in order to reach full tolerant quantum computers. And everything is scalable also because we are using the best of photonic technologies, I mean photonic integrated circuits, where you can encode and change the quantum information at room temperature using uh, uh, just applying some voltages on su such devices. So now I would like to uh, expose myself with telling you the strengths, challenges, and opportunities of such approach. Strengths are quite obvious. With this system, you can have a high-speed operation clock. You can get millions of photons per second, and you can change. You can run some uh, calculations at a high speed. Then, we would like to remind you that photons doesn't suffer, don't suffer from decurrence. There is no decurrence in photonic platforms. And with uh, our system, uh, with our systems, um, the size of the quantum circuit is not limited, because actually we can integrate everything on a photonic integrated circuit, we, can, we don't have any uh, limit in the, num in the depth of the quantum circuit that you can encode on our systems. This also provides us a huge dimensional space because actually photons are very particular qubits. They are not really qubits actually. They are like, more like qubits because you can play with the different uh, superpositions of photons in a light wave packet, so between the state 0, 1, 2, and so on. So this is also one challenge, one challenge. Photons are not like other qubits. Some uh, people will say that they are better than qubits. In our case, we just would like to say that it's also a challenge because we need to train everybody to uh, how to understand and how to think with photons. And the other big challenge is the photon losses. I told you that there is no decurrence with photonic qubits, but we have unfortunately, photon losses. So we can lose the quantum information when we lose the photons. So here it's not a scientific issue, it's more an engineering issue. We need to deal about the efficiency of the full systems, optimizing the coupling of fiber coupling everywhere, optimizing the transmissions of the devices, optimizing the detection efficiency, and like this, you can reach some thresholds in order to be able to, to uh, deploy easily. And this, strengths and challenges open the door to many opportunities. Now our systems can be operated in a boson sampling native, uh, with a boson sampling native uh, capability. There are the best boson samplers you can imagine in the world because actually we, you can send a lot of photons into photonic circuits that you can program and, and look at where the photons are at the output of this circuit. And with this also because of uh, the fact that uh, you can explore a higher dimensional space, 
you have the possibility to deploy variational algorithms by taking advantage of the, um, enhanced, uh, the enhancement of the expressivity of this Fox state uh, uh, feature. This is how we, we see an opportunity to deploy hybrid computing. Hybrid in the sense that photonic platforms can be operated hand in hand with other classical processors, CPU and GPUs, and there is no limitation because of the speed uh, operation. We are comparing megahertz and gigahertz of a CPU, but basically I can tell you that you can run calculations on photonic platforms within few seconds. And also, I uh, would like to, uh, then that's gonna be the last part, uh, hybrid is the sense that we will be able to deploy quantum computing on both photonic qubits and solid state qubits. Let me introduce you Askela. Askela is our first quantum computer that we have deployed in the cloud. It's made of six photons that you can generate, that are generated by one single photon sources. So they are emitted successively at different time. We need a demultiplexer in order to synchronize, in order to um, route the different photons in different spatial modes, and then we use fibers in order to synchronize the different photons before, before uh, changing the quantum information using inter universal interferometers. The universal interferometer is a photonic integrated circuit where you can play with, with uh, the different um, phase shifters. Everything then, all the photons are counted using SNSPDs, so you can have about 20 SNSPDs in one cryostat, and you look at the different correlations of your detectors. Everything is controlled by one computer, operated by Candela operating system. We have deployed Perceval. Perceval is a programming framework used by, in order to control the full system. And I can tell you, nobody is around the machine. The machine is alone in a, in a room, and everybody, all the users, are controlling the machines externally from, from this room, or in the same building for Candela engineers, or via the cloud of Candela that we have operated with our partners, uh, OVH Cloud, uh, because now we have about 400 users that are, now, uh, ability, that are now able to use this platform in order to test, learn, and deploy new uh, applications on these systems. If we compare the different uh, benchmarks, uh, we have been measuring the fidelity of a gate with Ask of Askela with the six qubit machines. Uh, one, two qubit, three qubit gate has been possible to be operated on this device. Uh, basically, one qubit gate is about 99.6%. It's how to, we can switch, switch sorry, the state of a photon into a, from one mode to another. And CNOT gate with 90, uh, almost 94%. And also, what I like a lot is we were able to operate TOEFL gates, so three qubit gates, uh, with a high efficiency of 86%, which is close to the state of the art if we compare with other platforms. In parallel, we also uh, demonstrated that it's possible to generate heralded three photon GZ states with a, with a fidelity of about 82%. In the future, uh, we will, of course, improve the technology, improve the number of features that we can have on the platform. One of the new features that we are very proud of is Perceval is now compatible with large uh, cluster state of, on GPU. So it's now possible to simulate photons on NVIDIA H100 chips that we have through our partnerships. Um, and then in the future, we'll be able to connect these GPUs to our QPUs, such as actually both will be able to work and, uh, collaboratively. Um, so basically, I can tell you, uh, with 24 photons on a photonic circuit, so about 200 moles, it's more or less equivalent to the simulations of 72 qubits. So when I was saying that photons or qubits are not exactly the same, here you can see that in terms of space, computational space, you can actually explore a much larger space with less photons than with traditional qubits. So I mentioned the Askela, which has been released in 2022. In the coming months, we will release other platforms with 8, 12, and after 50 uh, qubits uh, in order to, to reach uh, quantum utility. 
a little bit of um, business, I would say. <laughs> Uh, starting in January, we will uh, deploy different plans to use Candela Cloud. Up to now, it was for free, only with the Discover package. But in January, we will release the pro and enterprise packages where it will be possible to get access to larger QPUs with possibility to have unlimited tasks on the QPUs and also to get access to the large scale simulation. For enterprise plan, enterprise plan, it will be also possible to book slots on the machines in advance, which is, I think, it's also a major feature in order to, for enterprise to plan their, their developments. I have a few minutes left to discuss about the applications. So one of the applications I mentioned is variational quantum algorithms, basically how it works. You inject six photons into a photonic circuit that looks like this, actually, if you look at the uh, interferometer, and you, you parameterize all the phase shifters in order to actually then uh, measure a model output. With this model output, you calculate the loss function, and starting with this loss function, you can then uh, optimize the loss function by uh, changing the parameters. Um, this is basically uh, any, like any other variational quantum algorithms. For the model output, I can explain very quickly how we optimize and we gain in, in time. So we use actually um, different circuit blocks. We have two trainable circuit blocks and one um, data encoding circuit block in the middle. And we change only one by one parameters. And with this, we can measure, we can we can measure and, um, uh, the function f with a high efficiency. This approach induces a number reduces the number of parameters that we need to change, and we have seen that we can save a lot of time and we, the systems converge much faster. So with this device, we have been able to deploy different applications with converging times that are of few minutes. For example, we explored classifications, started with classifications of iris flowers, so that's quite uh, usual, but then it was uh, also possible to classify polymers of new, mater new materials, for, the, for example. We have been deploying the same with partial differential equation solver, so it's possible now to encode any partial differential equation on the system. Even with six qubits, it's enough, and solve differential equations by using variational algorithms. And the last is, of course, uh, the use of um, calculations of um, ground states in chemistry by using variational quantum engine solver. This is, I would like to uh, highlight the fact that this platform is perfect for such use cases because we can acquire millions of samples per second. Basically, uh, it takes very uh, short uh, time to, to run such operations. I would like to invite you uh, to see the colleague, uh, my colleague talking about uh, exploration of use cases with our partners EDF, the French electricity provider. And for not, unfortunately, this is in parallel, so I would like you to stay. <laughs> but I guess it's going to be recorded, and you, the talk will be accessible via YouTube. Last example about uh, promising hybrid approach is reinforcement learning. You will need to consider, for example, one agent that needs to learn from uh, an environment. We have been comparing the different convergence of classical quantum and hybrid classical and quantum approaches uh, together. If you look at the blue line, this is a classical approach. You see that it converges with a given speed, and it, it works. This is a reinforcement learning as we know it. If we do it with a quantum processor only, you see the orange line. You have a fast acceleration, and then it decreases and doesn't converge. This is why it took the, we, we got uh, got the idea to, to actually do it first with a, in a quantum regime, and once the maximum has been reached, to switch into a classical regime in order to converge, uh, in order to converge the system. So this is basically an example of what is possible to do as, as well by combining, by making the strong connections between the quantum, computer, quantum processing unit and classical techniques. Um, just a word about international expansions. Uh, next year, we will expand. We have now QPUs available in France, in Europe. 
Next year, we will expand in Canada thanks to our partnership, Exilion. There are already data centers. So we will have computers in Sherbrooke and in Shawanigan, uh, in Quebec, uh, both in Canada. This is possible because we have been working a lot on the engineering of the machines. Machines look at this. This is the machines that we have delivered a few months ago to OVH data centers. So basically, this is an HPC-ready quantum computer that you can plug on any uh, wall plug, basically. There is no need of water. There is no need of anything. Everything is air-cooled. We have a small cryostat inside, but it consumes about 3 kilowatts. So this is extremely energy efficient. I'm telling this because now this is a big concern for HPCs and data centers to do some, run some tests, do some innovations, and have some quantum machines inside the machine, inside the centers. But the energy issue, it's an energy, it's an issue that we shouldn't forget. It's also uh, very comfortable because everything is scalable due to the modularity of the machines. Inside there are racks that are connected by optical fibers and you can change the function of the racks by playing with the different uh, contents of the, of the racks. And I will just very briefly show you uh, how it works to assemble the machine. So OVH Cloud made, sent us an order or purchased uh, last January. It took us about three, four months to receive all the components. So the cryostat, because we have partners for this, the lasers, all the, the, the stuff that we needed. And then it took us about three months just to fabricate the single photon sources, test it, assemble the different parts, and put everything in the device. Just for the joke, um, if you all don't want to use it as a quantum computer, like I like to say to a data center, you can still use it as a light. <laughs> and last and um, very important point is what is the next? I mentioned also the fact that you can do hybrid by playing with the fact that quantum information is not only on the photons, but it can also be on the spin of the quantum dots. Recently, earlier this year, we have demonstrated that it's possible to generate a large stream of untangled and indiscutible photons emitted by one spin inserted in a cavity. So with the same device, just with a small uh, magnetic field uh, in order to have the spin alive. So nothing big, nothing complicated in terms of engineering. We are using the same cryostat, a few millitesla for the magnetic field, and with this we can generate untangled photons. And more recently, we have actually uh, published this very interesting paper about spin optical quantum computing architecture. So here it's a first step in order to show how it's possible to build quantum large-scale and fault-tolerant quantum computers by combining operations on the photons and entanglement between the photons and the spin qubits. So this is the first step. We have it allows us to calculate some thresholds. I will not uh, enter into the details because I'm not the expert about this field. But in the future, we'll continue to improve this technique, to continue the architecture, and in order to make um, the spin optical quantum computer a reality. Thank you. <laughs>